Hello again, everybody, and welcome back. It is once again me, your favorite deputy of Movie Deputy Podcasts, bringing to you the Hiding Place review. Now, if I sound a little bit more reverent or anything on that one, it's because this one, this one's going to be a hard one for me to do, so please bear with me. It's... <sighs> It's, it's, it's complicated. It's not, there's nothing wrong. Don't take it that way. But when I when I talked about this one on my episode a couple days ago of the whole thing with the upcoming movies, it looked like just a normal movie as I just kind of just casually noticed. Sorry, I'm just tripping over my own words here. As this one is only going to be playing on August 3rd and August 5th. It's a very limited release on this. And I, I don't know if it's going to be available in digital or what the plan is after that. But I did see this. That Night before last, when I saw this, it just completely caught me off guard for kind of what this was. I knew it was about Corey Ten Boom and her family, her dad Casper, and her sister Betsy. Through the, her dad had this watch shop, and they all lived together. But before I get too much into the story, I want to touch on the whole thing. This is not a movie. It, it, well, it's a movie, don't, but it's not a movie. It's, we're basically watching a screenplay. Everything is taking place on a stage and we're watching the set change and we're watching kind of everything, literally seeing part of the set on this like giant Lazy Susan as it turns around and changes from room to room. And the story is told from that perspective. So it's not like we're watching a movie. It's like you're going to the theater and you're watching a play play out as this is all happening. But that's, that's not the hard part. The hard part is actually the watching of this here. One of the first, first things it says in the beginning of the movie is that your brokenness is never wasted. And there's a couple other really important quotes I just want to kind of touch on, and it'll make more sense as I talk about this a little bit more here. But it's that wisdom tells the truth, which, as we see a lot of times happening with that. And it says we can respect all, even with those we disagree. Yes and no. And to see something rightly, you must see it with love. Yes and no. Uh, mind you, the whole yes and no thing, these are my comments through it, but I'm just kind of touching on these quotes just because it's going to be meaningful as I get into this a little bit more. The, one of the hardest ones for me was, it's through suffering that we get into glory. Perhaps it's through darkness that we get into the light. Now, <laughs> that's where I really have a hard time with this one. I don't delve into my personal life a whole lot with my reviews and with my, everything with Movie Deputy, but I grew up in a very... My, my home life was, to say less than ideal is an understatement on that. It was very abusive in multiple different ways. And the person that raised me, the I, I refuse to even call her my mother, but she she raised me and she was a very big fan of Corey Ten Boom and she talked about, she would quote her and she had her books and things like that. But the way that this woman justified her actions of things that happened to me through uh, some of Corey Ten Boom's quotes maybe made me a little bit biased on this. <sighs> As I'm watching this and her whole thing is that we have to love those that we hate and we have to look past all that and the whole thing, oh, if you hold on to hatred, it's doing more harm to you because it's not hurting the other person. That's, that's the hard part with me is because I have no, like said, so nothing to do with Corey Ten Boom, but the person that raised me. I have hated her for so much of my life that it is honestly, if I ever let go of that hate, I don't know if I will know who I am because I literally it has become such a part of my psyche because I've hated her from a very young age. And people are like, oh, you can't hate somebody as a child. I'm like, oh, trust me, you can trust me. I'm not going to go into the details or anything of any of that, but it's just I. <sighs> And like another quote from the movie is, forgiveness must be a scandal for it to have any power at all. And like, there's just some of these quotes. I, through this, it's like her and her, the whole story, I, want, I, don't, I don't want to keep talking about me. The whole story with this is that she is living with her father and her sister and they are repairing watches and clocks for their community. And this is all going on during World War II. Through some friends and everything of theirs, there's some stuff that's going on. They end up being kind of, kind of a refuge home for Jews that are hiding out until they can get to safety. At the end of the movie, it explains that they helped rescue more than 600 Jewish individuals from World War II and saved them from everything. But when it's found out what they're doing, they actually get sent to, I think it's called Ravensbrück. It's one of the concentration camps. It's not where the Jews went, as Corey Ten Boom and her family weren't Jewish, but it's where they imprison people who had helped the Jews. And they face a lot of this, a lot of similar disparities in these camps, but just not to the harshness that the Jewish people experienced. And in the it's like she's trying to understand and forgive these Nazis and trying to love them for who they are and regardless of what they did and it's 
I, I don't know how she did it. I, I, I couldn't do it. I don't know many people that could do it. <sighs> she was definitely an inspiration to a lot of people. And I, I mean, she, she made a huge difference in people's lives. So I'm not disparaging that at all. But movies like this are so difficult because it's like, especially with my personal connection, not that I had a connection to her personally, but I had a connection to somebody who revered her and respected her that I just, I can't get past that in my brain. Now, on a personal level, just kind of because this is one of those things where I really have to weigh how I'm personally looking at a movie versus rating it on the deputy scale. And that's one of the things that's really hard for me on movies like this because I'm sitting here and I know I rate movies on the deputy scale and I know where I want to rate this movie. I, I really have to struggle with that one. And I heard people after this movie was done playing and people were walking out of the theater and they were calling this one of the most impactful movies they've ever seen. And I'm like, okay, you really think that's impactful? Go watch uh, the Sound of Freedom if you really want an impactful movie. But these people were walking out just in full on tears. And it, great. I mean, I'm glad the movie touched them in that way. I'm not trying to disparage that in the least. But on a personal note, just for me personally, I, I wanted to give this a really bad rating. Like, for, for me, this was such a difficult movie personally that I don't, I didn't want to give this a fair rating. I don't want to to sit here and review this movie fairly. But at the same time, that's exactly why I created Movie Deputy is because I was tired of people reviewing movies just based on their feelings. I wanted to know about the story. I wanted to know about the target audience. I wanted to know what was, why was this, why was this even a movie? What was the point of it? What's the story about? Who's this trying to reach? And I got lost because... I, could, I can't get past my own things that are in my head and in my heart. So personally, like I said, I would probably want to give this movie a two or three just based on my personal feelings, not based off of anything that was in the movie. But being true to the deputy scale, I also have to recognize that this has a very narrow audience. If I take my personal feelings completely out of this, then unless you've ever heard of Corey Ten Boom or her story, then you're not, this isn't going to be a movie for you. You're not going to understand the references that are being made in this movie that are references to her life and references to World War II and references to everything that was going on at the concentration camps and Hitler and the, just, it's, there's so many historical references in this one. But like I said, unless you're familiar with the story to begin with, you're not you're not gonna go out of your way to see this. It's not this is not gonna appeal to a wide audience. The screen that I saw this in a couple nights ago, I think there was 164 seats available. There were maybe 20 people in there, including myself. So it's not like it's this is not gonna have a big audience. So I have to look at the story and I have to look at how things play out. And there were some parts of this that were confusing. It's just some of the things that were happening on stage and you just just some of the ways it was done that you'd probably have to watch it a couple times to completely understand all the nuances that were being presented. And this, you're probably wondering, okay, so what did you give this on the deputy scale? Like I said, I have to separate that out from my personal feelings, and that, like I said, that's why I created Deputy. But I did give The Hiding Place a 6.5 out of 10 on the deputy scale. I was debating about mid-7s just because of the powerfulness of the story. It's not even a word. But um, <laughs> the story itself is very impactful, and it's very touching in everything that it's doing, and the, the beautiful, warm relationship among the Ten Boom family and and how they get along with their neighbors and their impact on the community that they live in that it's just that uh, it kind of grabs your heart a little bit and just it's so nice to see that in a world where we're now in a world where families are so disconnected and in this one they are so close this is going to appeal to a lot of people in the religious side of my listeners and that's going to be great because this is going to touch a lot of people in a lot of great ways. You're probably wondering, okay, with all of this, what did you give it on the deputy scale? I did have to give this movie a, a, the guilty rating as well as only rating it what I did on the deputy scale. And it's hard to come to terms with that sometimes, but giving this a 6.5 with that guilty rating, like I said, I debated about going a little bit higher, but there's, like I said, there's just some things that it just doesn't have the cohesion for a higher score. So it's not that I'm letting my personal feelings impact or lower the score, though it's the, my personal stuff that makes it really hard to give this a fair review. And I have to stop and I have to separate the thoughts of like, okay, how is this affecting me versus, okay, how was the movie presented? And like I said, 
<laughs> it's like this. I'm sitting here laughing, but I'm not laughing. It's just, it's like it's like a coping mechanism of mine. But there's just <laughs> in in this they have a connection to one of the a young gentleman that becomes a Nazi, and they encounter him in the war, and then even after the war, and there's just so many things that are happening with that story too. And one of the final scenes in the movie, it tackles a thing of forgiveness that it, it's so difficult to even comprehend. It's that forgiveness is the only way forward and there is no darkness so deep that he is not deeper still, referring to God or a higher power or whatever it is that you believe in. A big thing that it touched on in the credits that I thought was really impactful is, like I said, the Ten Boom family made a huge impact on the Jewish community. In the Jewish, in Judaism, basically, if you die on your birthday, it's a very high sign of reverence for who you were as a person. And Corey Ten Boom died in 1983 at the age of 91 on her birthday. And it, it was basically recognized a lot by the Jewish community because she was so highly revered for a lot of the work that she did. Like I said, this one wasn't, it's not, it's not going to be your typical movie. It's it's a play on screen and it, it, it's so beautifully done. Actors and actresses that did this, it's, it's so engrossing and it's one of those ones that you really hope you don't have to get up and go pee in the middle of it because there's, there's not, even though it's not like a high action or a high intensity story, it, it has a constant flow throughout that you just don't want to, you don't want to miss. So if you get a chance to go check this out I, tonight when it's going to be in some other theaters nationwide, because like I said, it was just on the 3rd and then it's going to be playing tonight, August 5th, in different theaters around the country. Or even when it comes out on digital, like I said, be, if, if you're into World War II history, if you're into Jewish history, if you're into anything having to do with the Holocaust or anything like that, or even if you're just a fan of Corey Ten Boom, this is going to be one that you're going to want to check out as hard as it is for me to say. <laughs> like I said, it's so hard to separating out my personal stuff from deputy stuff and sorry I'm, try, I'm been trying to hold it together here and like I said if this is something that interests you please go check it out I've done my best to try to bring you a fair and impartial review but I couldn't explain this movie to you without explaining why I had the feelings I did I also want to do that because I want to express how I separate the two when I'm doing things like this because there's so I've given movies that I've loved horrible ratings. I'm giving movies that have hated great ratings because I'm able to separate that thing, uh, separate my, my own personal feelings from my own, from the deputy rating scale. I think that, it, oh, for me personally, I think it takes a lot because I know it takes a lot out of me to do that. I hope that you have appreciated me sharing this with you. If you want to know maybe a little bit more about my life, if I get a bunch of questions based on this movie, I might be doing a show just to kind of help people and that might have gone through similar things. I don't, sometimes it helps to share, sometimes not. It's, it's a double-edged sword with that, but... I hope that you have enjoyed this. I hope that if you are a fan that you will check this out. I can't wait to talk to you about more movies soon. Thank you for coming along with me on this journey. Bye-bye.